everyone, Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today, before we get into this video, I just want to preface this video uh, by letting you know that what you're about to see is a printing video that's just kind of a little snippet. Uh, it's kind of the end result of a series that I did in my subscription service called the Fellowship of Photographers. So if you do want to figure out how you can join the fellowship today, head over to fellowshipofphotographers.com and it's just a one monthly fee. It's just one tier bracket. I don't mess with the whole like join in at X dollars a month and X dollars and you get this and you get this. I would just rather everyone have everything at one uh, affordable investment instead of do like a $1 a month all the way up to like $500 a month. It's just kind of silly. So anyway, this is, uh, you, get, you get all this for uh, just one set price. And this is the end result of a series I did. So you're, in this video, you're gonna see me uh, frame and hang these prints and talk about them a little bit. It's all these prints that are actually right behind me in my office. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some tips along the way. So you're still gonna get some great free information out of this video. But if you wanna see how I soft proofed uh, the images and how I uh, completely edited one of them, I go through like a complete workflow. I think one of the one that I edit is like a, a 10 image focus stack and I use luminosity masks and I do uh, all this work as this autumn waterfall scene. So um, yeah, it, if you wanna to kind of see the behind the scenes of how everything kind of goes more in depth and more complicated, um, head over to fellowshipofphotographers.com and everything will be on there. Uh, it's it's a, a subscription service. So uh, if you have any questions, everything will be answered promptly. And if I can't answer the question that you have in a text comment, then I will make a video and answer your question. Because uh, again, if you're, if you're over there paying me monthly, you're spending your hard earned money on me and I'm gonna provide the value that you, that you deserve for that money. So I hope you enjoy it. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments and uh, let's, let's get in with the video. All right, hello everyone, welcome back. So we have all of the prints made. They're actually right here on the floor below me. Uh, as you can see, we uh, drilled all the hardware into the back of the frames and they're all hung on the wall behind me, spaced evenly. Uh, that's all done. The prints are made, I have my mat board right here. So what I wanna do is give you uh, a couple of tips here about uh, the actual prints, the order that we're gonna put the prints in, which we'll talk about that in a second. And then I'll give you um, a tip on the actual mat board. So I went to my local framing company, uh, bought three pieces of mat board, told them the size that I wanted for the opening, um, and got them all cut. So here is my biggest tip for uh, sizing everything, okay? So the frames, the prints themselves, and the mat board were all cut by separate sources. And the example for that is the prints were made by me, the frames were made by the framing company, the brand that makes them, and then the mat board was cut out uh, by a specific employee at the framing company. So they were, they were all sized by, by different people or different sources. And when that happens, there's always chance for a small margin of error. Even if it's just something like an eighth of an inch, there could, there could be just a little bit of a shift there in size. So I try not to make the print the exact size that I tell the framing company to make the mat board opening. So th let me give you a good example. The printer paper that I am printing on is 17 by 22, okay? That's the full size of the paper. The mat board opening that I told the framing company I wanted is 16 and a half by 21 and a half. So I gave myself a half an inch of playroom on either side where there's gonna be a half an inch of mat board covering that print. So here, so you're probably thinking, wow, why would you, you know, if, if the size, you know, if the size is correct, then you're basically cropping a half an inch off of your print all the way around. So it's not true. What I did with the paper, which I'll show you here, just one second. All right, here we go. Sorry, I wanted to actually be able to hold the print so I could show you. So you can see there's a very small white border all the way around this print. It's a 17 by 22 print, but I told the Epson software to print the actual ink at 16 and three quarters inch, so 16.75, at by 21.75. So all the way around, even though this is a half an inch margin of error for opening, I cut it down even further by making this a 16.75 by 21.75. And that basically gives me this slim little white border 
to play for error. And the reason I do that is because if there is an actual error and the whiteboard is showing, the little white border here, I have a, a precision paper trimmer right behind the camera that I can go and slice little bits off. But that way it kind of saves me because if it is the perfect size, that's fine, then I'll just cut this down and still tape it to the back of the mat board. But if there's a little bit of variation there and the size is not 100% to the millimeter correct, well then I've given myself a half an inch on the mat board opening and uh, another little bit uh, another what quarter of an inch here to play with on the border all the way around the print of the paper so anyway that's just a, a tip there when all the uh, the frame the print and the mat border all being done by different sources you'll typically want to do it this way just to save yourself the trouble of having to make a reprint if the mat board's too big and it shows you know the back of the frame and the paper doesn't fit is lots of things that can happen basically make sure that you always go a little bit further in on your mat board than you think you need so that just in case uh, the person that cutting the mat board or the frame or whatever is messed up you just you just have some playroom there okay uh, now we'll talk about uh, the actual framing I'll do some uh, run some b-roll footage of me framing and matting these and then when they're all actually put in the frames on the wall, we'll talk about uh, my tip as to why I chose these three images and why I'm putting them in a specific order from left to right. We'll talk about uh, the flow and why it looks good the way it does. So uh, let's go ahead and run some video footage of me uh, framing and matting all these. We found holes in these walls. We like what we saw. Seems so strong until it falls. The fire must fall Let's talk about what I was mentioning a few minutes ago. Now that they're all on the wall and everything looks nice. Uh, by the way, this is so rewarding. I love being able to make my own prints, uh, especially at this size and uh, mat everything myself and frame it. It's not easy, it's not for the faint of heart at all. Probably wouldn't recommend doing the whole thing by yourself, just the printing is fine, but the whole matting and framing, uh, if you can find a good price, do that, but I have a really nice uh, guy that owns a framing company not far from my house, so I can always get pretty cheap mat board and frames from him. Um, anyway, so these, these look beautiful. So let's talk about uh, what I was mentioning earlier, which was uh, how I decided to put them in a specific order. And this doesn't always apply to every print series that you put on the wall, but it, it needs some kind of good flow to it. And so let, me, so let me give you some explanation here. So first off, you'll notice the colors are all very different. We have uh, a very uh, warm yellowish autumn scene here with red leaves and a lot of yellows, reds, oranges, and then the waterfall. And then here we have a very pink, um, pink orange red sunset with kind of purple magenta water reflecting off of the sky. And then here we don't have a lot of color. It's mainly dark moody colors with a really nice blue sheen on the water. So they're all very different. And here's kind of my philosophy when I'm hanging prints on the wall like this. They either need to all go together and have kind of the same color scheme, or else they need to be all pretty astronomically different so they all kind of complement each other. So for example, uh, if I wanted to do all autumn photos, then I would do all photos that have this nice yellow, warm, green, red tone, and I would do like three autumn photos. Or maybe I'll do three sunset photos that have the same pink and red tones. And then of course down here, maybe I would do three kind of desaturated moody photos that have these nice moody rain clouds and this stormy sky uh, with very subdued colors. So 
you, you want to kind of keep them in a flow. And if, you, if you're not doing all the same colors, then again, I think they need to be very different so they all kind of pop on their own. Now here is uh, how I chose the order, okay? And this, this is kind of important because you want there to be a flow when you have images that are uh, gonna be right next to each other. And the flow here, at least my idea behind this, is this. Let me get over here so you can see this photo. So this print is just a simple waterfall scene, but it does have a flow to it, no pun intended because of the water. Um, but the waterfall flows from the middle of the frame and it very clearly and obviously leads right off the frame. So for example, if I would have put this photo on this end down here uh, by this print where there's no other photo beside it where it just leads off to the wall, then when you're looking at this print, your eye is gonna notice all this and the leading line of the water is gonna lead you right into the blank wall. And that's, that's just not good with me as a photographer. I don't like anyone to be led right off the wall unless it's one big centerpiece. Um, but when there's multiple photos, I want you to notice this. So this print here leads you down here to the waterfall. The waterfall streams right off the print and it leads you into this one where this little puddle right by the lake bed starts right here, literally even in the bottom third at the exact same point where this print leads off. So this leads off the frame and this photo starts in the frame right here where this one left off, takes you right up the middle with this leading line and then into this sunset. But this photo here, this print here, is very dark and moody on the bottom and the sides. I made sure the foreground was very crushed in the shadows, which helps lead it into this print. Let me get my big fat head out of the way. Um, so this print here is very dark. It's almost got a, I think I put a big vignette around this one at some point because it's very dark on the sides and in the corners of the foreground. And so the nice dark shadows here kind of just flow right into the darks here because the sides are both very dark and they don't really distract from one another. So there's not so much of a flow with these two prints, but it's very easy to make your way from this print to this print because this one's super colorful and it's not stealing anything away from that one because that one's not trying to be colorful. It's just moody and dramatic on its own. And when you finally get done appreciating the colors in this one, you get down to the shadows and all the darks kind of lead you and pick up right into here because this photo is naturally dark and moody and uh, subdued with the colors and desaturated. And it's just, it's great on its own and it doesn't lead you anywhere. This photo does not have any leading lines that lead you off of the frame. It simply has a beautiful majestic waterfall that leads you right down in the center and then you eventually notice the rocks and things just all basically bend in from the sides and lead you into the waterfall. Nothing leads you off the frame to the wall. So that's kind of my idea behind the flow uh, with all these. Again, waterfall leads you right off the frame, picks you up right here, leads you into the sunset. Very dark shadows, very dark here. Everything leads inward, center to the waterfall, and then everything else is just uh, bonus colors and little details that you can see if you get up nice and close, super sharp. Uh, by the way, all these photos were taken with, well, these two photos on the end were taken with the D850, and then this photo in the center was taken with my Nikon D810. So all of them with uh, D800 series Nikon cameras. Those are my favorite, as you know, and I'm happy with the result. I'm gonna like that, it's gonna make a nice background. Uh, for a lot of my videos now. I just got to clean my office up a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you guys for sticking around. If you have any questions about the print process or uh, anything else, framing, matting, all the, that good stuff, soft proofing, just let me know. And thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one.